Booyah, Andy. I said booyah this morning. It is a beautiful morning. It is just gorgeous out, isn't it? Even when we get here early, it was just beautiful. Saturday night, I had the fan in the window because it was 60 at night. You were worried about a little snow last week. <laughs> Welcome to Montana, huh? Yeah, 50s, 60s this week. Bottom will fall out, then it'll come back again. It's just a roller coaster in the fall. We won't have real fe uh, uh, winter until like the rodeos here, when it gets to be like 48,000 below. Then it's winter, okay? What? Yep, Andy, so you're correct. It was Tommy Boland. The hunt for vinyl has continued. Vinyl Records is continuing, and we're having some really good luck. We're listening to Tommy Boland post Toasties off the Private Eyes album this Monday morning. And good morning, everybody. It is Monday, November 6th. If you needed to be to work by 8, I hate to tell you, looking at the clock up there, you're late. <laughs> Is that necessary? Is sad bad trombone necessary? Andy says it is. Um, like I said, it's beautiful this morning. Uh... The list is up. Andy's got the list up. Besides being election day tomorrow, okay, we've got to get through our weekly Monday, uh, uh, our weekly Monday national what is it day. Um, and today is November 6th, and it is national, hey, it's national job action. That sounds pretty cool, job action day. It's, this is pretty cool, and yeah, that's pretty cool. It's dog, National Dog Film Festival Day, where participating uh, theaters uh, across the uh, country uh, allow dogs to come in and watch movies. It's, uh, wow, Andy, National Nachos Day? Guess what we're having for lunch? Guess we're going to have brunch for nachos! And it's... I can't believe that. It's National, look it up on Google, I tell you every week, National Marooned Without a Compass Day. So what, we're supposed to just go get lost? And, and, and speaking of marooned, what the hell happened yesterday? Was it Saturday late, Sunday morning? You know what I'm half talking about? The, the clocks went back. No, they went forwards. They, they go, they're, the clocks are different. You know? It's like for crying out loud. I have a hard enough time trying to figure out what freaking time it is without someone messing with daylight savings. Now it's not. Now it is. They're messing with the clocks. Shit. One time on, on, on Sunday, I was in six different time zones, Andy. It's like, Jesus, in my own house, I'm trying to find, change the clocks, and it's like, it's, it, it's like I'm hauling these stuff. I go into one room, I'm in one time zone, another room, another time room, I'm trying to synchronize them. I'm like, Jojo, the circus, circus, clock, I'm just changing clocks everywhere. It's like, Jesus Christ, I got digital clocks, analog clocks. Clocks on the wall, clocks on the desk, clocks on nightstands. I got wristwatches on. <sighs> for what? What are we doing this for? Is it extra light in the morning? It's not extra light at day, day night because it's going to start getting light, dark at like, what, 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah, we got it. It's light in the morning. What, for half an hour? It's weird for crying out loud. What, is the earth spinning faster now? Now it's spinning faster, so we have to adjust the clocks. Am I wrong on that? It's not spinning. 
spins like a 33 and a third vinyl. It's not a 45. You know, it, it, it's all like, let's do the time warp again. Man, it is. It drives me nuts. I've been all cranky for two days, been asleep, woke up my usual time. You know, clocks went by an hour. They went back an hour. So when I woke up Sunday morning, you know, it's like, well, it's Lottie Dodge, it's only 4 30. No, it's 3 30. It's like, what in God's name am I doing up at 3 freaking 30 in the morning? And, you know, I'm tired by breakfast. Had a bunch of shit to do. Lions had a bye yesterday. Um, but, yeah, it's like, you're tired for what? I'm tired, going to be tired now for like three weeks. Time warps. Yeah, time warp. Let's do the time warp. Speaking of time warp. You know, as I said, tomorrow's election day. So, you know, you're going to have to vote. But do you realize that the last time that there was a safety levy passed in the city limits of Great Falls, that's for the, 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 the city, the, the levy and the bond that you're going to see on the ballot. I got a ballot right here, but um, it, it, it was in 1969. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, you know. But tomorrow, like I said, is election day. So you're going to have to get your ass out and vote. If you don't vote, you can't complain. I mean, it's your right to vote, for crying out loud. Okay? So, so come on and get out and vote tomorrow. Unless you've nailed your vote ballots in already. But, you know, you realize now that people poll have died for your right to vote. Don't take that lightly, okay? You have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to get out and vote, okay, for starters. Um, as an American citizen, you know, I, I, you know, I, I see him all the time on TV. I am complaining. I am complaining about this. Quit complaining, complaining, get your ass out, and vote tomorrow, okay? So the biggest, we're going to go with the biggest issue on, on uh, we're going to do the local uh, the ballot a little bit. Um, what I'm seeing is the biggest issue is on the Great Falls ballot is the, uh, the safety issue, the safety bond, the safety levy, you know, the fire safety for the city limits, the police. Now, I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading, you know, I got some information. I'm reading that the, the last time that, what, Andy, the last time it was in 1969? Last time when Great Falls passed a safety levy was in 1969. I want a party like it's 1969! Other innuendos in there, I'm thinking too, aren't there? Can I say those? Are there? I cannot say those. Um, are you serious? Though, think about this. 1969. I was just starting junior high school. I was still living in Michigan. I didn't even have to move to Montana. I haven't even moved to Montana yet. I'm still in junior high in Michigan. Okay, Andy, that was I moved to Montana in 19. Uh, 70, so how long have I, 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 I been here? 53 years. I, I was told there'd be no math, so I'm going to ask you. I've been here 53 years, so that means that <coughs> the last, last time that the city of Great Falls uh, passed a safety levy for fire safety and police protection and all that uh, was 54 years ago. 1968. That's the year they held Woodstock. Seriously, Woodstock was in 1969. Okay? <laughs> Crying out loud, I mean, I'm still listening 
to the same vinyl records. I'm still wearing the same Grateful Dead, you know, kind of clothing. I'm kind of stuck in the 60s, smoking legal weed now. And get it in the city limits, thanks to the vote that went past. Um, but seriously, we, we, we shouldn't be relying on a safety le levy that's antiquated as, as much as I am. <laughs> that's like, you know, I'm the 60s Grateful Dead smoking weed, you know, Woodstock dude, summer of love. It was that 69 was the summer of love. Yeah. <laughs> That's how antiquated. I mean, I'm listening. <laughs> Led Zeppelin won. 69. I mean, come on. That's serious. Woodstock. I mean, that's amazing when you think about it. Yeah, they passed the levy at Great Falls when there was Woodstock. Well, come on, all you big, strong men. Uncle Sam needs your help again. He got himself in a, sorry, terrible jail. Way on Donner in Vietnam. It, it, you know, it, if you break it down, everybody's, oh, my God, it's expensive. Let's break it down, okay? okay the city of Great Falls, it's approximately, now I don't know what all this actually means, but you know, I got it off your ballot. Here's your ballot will come and you'll have a secrecy envelope and then you're going to have your ballot right here. You're going to have your ballot. Mill levies and all that are on there. We'll get to what all's on there. Now the city of Great Falls is a uh, asking for uh, 103 mills a year, 103.7 whatever mills a year. Um, so let's break that down. Everybody's like, why not the mills? Oh my God, the mills are coming. The mills are coming. Da, 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 da. Break it down. Calm down, everybody. For a property value of a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, let's just go with a hundred thousand for the sake of our. But now we need to have more talent to rent my house. It's worth a hundred thousand. Okay? The tax increase would be a hundred and forty dollars a year. That would be eleven dollars and sixty cents a month or approximately forty cents a day. That's how it breaks down. For a hundred thousand, you know, now I don't know what my house is worth in Riverview or Valley View or whatever view I have. It's not a really good view, actually. You know, I've ever noticed that. They tell me, you live in Rav Valley View, not Riverview. But it's like I can't see the valley. And when I'm in Riverview, I can't see the river. So, 40 cents a day. Now... You of course got you know, and I'm trying to be partial on this on every on all you know voting issues. I don't want to sway the voters, you know. Yeah, I don't want everybody accusing me of you know whatever hijinks, hijinks. You've got the naysayers, you've got the critics. They're kind of you know they're complaining about the last bill levies and the library levels. Levies, you know, and and the park levies, and you know, you know, and, and and all the levies that are being passed before, you know, it's like you can hear them, you know. If it keeps on raining, the levies gonna break. And, I'm sorry, Andy, it's just like they go, you know, oh my God, they're libraries, they're funding books. <laughs> The library's getting money. They're getting books, buying books. Honestly, okay? Honestly, people, okay? You can't judge present levy now. You can't say that. That's old news, 
Okay? That's past history. Park levy was a couple years ago. The county safety levy for the sheriffs was a couple years ago. Library, a couple few months ago. It's all done. Okay? It's past. You know? Um, it has nothing to do with the current issues. Social media is full of people. You know? It's all about the library and the safety. What can we do? And the library should have done this. And we're paying for the parks. And they're, they're watering the lawns in the middle of the summer. And, and shut up. That has nothing to do with the safety levy now. I mean, blaming the library and the past saving. That's like getting mad at your present girlfriend for someone she dated before you even met her, and you don't even know the dude you're better, the dated, you're bad about it. <laughs> I'm serious. The reality of the situation is crime is up in Great Falls, and it's up a lot, okay? It's up a lot. Um, and I'm not talking about loitering and the guys hanging out here and the homeless or the litterers. We're talking serious crime problems. And we can't afford not to address it. Missoula, Bozeman, Billings, Cowsville, Helena, they've all addressed this issue. Uh, Great Falls? You know, you know how Great Falls is addressed. And by the time we got to Woodstock, we were half a million strong. Yeah, Woodstock. That's the last time they passed it. Safety issue was in 1969, which was Woodstock. God, I don't know if I feel young or old or white. <laughs> I make a big wood deal of Woodstock every year. And now I'm like... Wait, that was what I did. They haven't passed the safety levy since, you know, Country Joe and the Fish and Can Heat played at Woodstock. What about Santana and Jefferson Airplane? No, they were good, too. We have a serious crime problem here. Um, other people, uh, other cities uh, have addressed it. You can complain about the crime. Um, if you can complain about the crime rate, then vote no, and then still, then, then, you know, you can't. You can't, you, you, you can't do nothing about it when there's an opportunity sitting right here, okay? Sitting right here on the ballot, there's an opportunity to address the crime rate in Great Falls, okay? Uh, I live in one of the views that I can't see, okay? And every day I check the perimeter of my fence, I check my gates. I check the garage doors because I have dogs and I don't want people messing with my dogs. And you know what? People do that. Read the news. They do it in buildings. They do it. Will, will extra boots on the street stop that? That's debatable. That's a debatable argument. And I've seen that argument. Will more boots on the street uh, uh, stop rural crime? Historically, yes. It tells, historically, it tells us yes. You know, um, you can't bitch about the crime rate. And like I said, don't do nothing about it. Um, money is a t uh, I know it's a t touchy issue. It's more money, more money. Hey, buy more money. Money. It's a gas. Scrab it. You know, keep your hands off of my stash. Yeah. Um, all the taxpayers, we're all screaming, we're all tapped out, okay? Things are getting getting more expensive. I'm aware of it. I'm not like, I'm not like, I got blindfolds on. I don't know. I know exactly what's going on. I shop here in the community. I uh, 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 buy my groceries here. I buy my gas here. Uh, pay utilities. I know what rent prices are. I work here. Um... Have you seen taxes in Missoula lately? I went to high school there. I have friends there. You think taxes are high in Great Falls? You ain't seen nothing yet. Okay? Another thing that people aren't thinking about, and this is a big one, Andy, isn't it? 
I, I think so, is that if we have more crime, okay, more crime in the city than the taxes, not the taxes, the, uh, the uh, <coughs> give me the word, it, it gives me the word, the insurance rates for not only the city's insurance, but the homeowners, property owners, <coughs> business owners, all go up. So it only makes sense to spend money to save money, if that makes any sense. It does. Okay, it does. Uh, and, re and so remember that. Remember that. Um, remember that when you get out and vote. And remember that when you get out and vote tomorrow. I can't stress enough how you should get out and vote. You know, and look at the issues. Look at the issues and look what we need. Don't you dare be gr complaining about the crime rate and that there's nothing being done. And then, you know, in another argument, well, we, yeah, we're going to vote more, more cops. They're going to both throw more people in jail and then they're, they're just going to let them out. What do you want to do with a common shoplifter or something like that? You blame the courts for letting them out. What do you want to do? I mean, I've actually seen on social media, yeah, we should execute them and put them in prison for life. The United States incarcerates more people than any other nation on the face of the planet. Your county jails are full. Your state prisons are full. Your state federal prisons are full. And you want to just keep putting them in there. The war like that don't seem to be working. There's got to be another solution. Okay? Um, they don't throw away the... They don't just... If you think that it's just a catch and release, you don't know how the criminal justice system works. It's a little more complicated than just that. Okay? You know, if you think that a simple shoplifter that stole some food to put, you know, because they can't make ends meet in this economy should go to jail for how long? Well, I've seen not ridiculous. I've seen a guy on Facebook was like, 30 years shoplifting, misdemeanor. I don't know. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> no doubt, man. Um. I'm not really trying to tell everybody how to vote. I'm just pointing out some obvious things. You know, you have some bond issues for a safety levy. And I know we've got levied, we're levied up the levy. Okay? Drove my Chevy to the levy, but the levy was dry. But it's necessary. You know? I'm tired. You know, if we have more cops on the street, maybe there's an extra cop driving down my alley at night, so the gates and the fence might be just a little more secure. Um, I, I'm just trying to lay the facts down, um, you know, the way I see them, the way I see it. Okay, I'm a threat. I'm a taxpayer. I'm a property owner. I work here in Great Falls. I live here. I've raised kids here. Okay, so um, I know I haven't lived. I go, how oh, are you not from Montana? You just said you weren't here in 19, you know, when the levy was passed. You know, I've lived here 53 years in Montana. I paid my taxes. Okay, so. You know, do we need more? Do we need more boots on the street? Do we need more investigative uh, power? Do we need more uh, uh, officers in the schools? What are those uh, uh, SROs? Do, do we need? Uh, yeah, we do. We do. Data says we do. So um, it's just a look at your look at your look at your the X's and O's. Hasn't been done thing. I get, I, I, again, you know, last safety bill, uh, levy is as antiquated as I am. <laughs> the last safety levy was listening to Led Zeppelin. The local elections, you know, um, are veritable who's who at Great Falls, and I 
believe I I know almost everyone. I mean, the mayors were us, you know, it's Abby Abby Brown, uh, Joe McKinney, Corey Reeves, uh, 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 Casey Snyder. Uh, uh, hell, I've known Corey since my youngest kid went to school. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I like it. I can't tell you how to vote. You know, I, I Abby looks good. Joe looks good. You know, <laughs> Corey's got some ideas. Casey, come on, good ideas. Got to read who you want to vote for. Do your homework. Do your homework. Pays off. Okay. Uh, the city commission. There's a vote for uh, uh, two. Uh, if McKinney loses the mayor's race, and he still holds a question. See, I decided, I'm not sure how that works, but I know there's a vote for two candidates um, for the city commission. It's Kendall, uh, uh, Kendall Cox, uh, Eric Heinbach, uh, Michaela Stroop, uh, Shannon Wilson, and uh, Rick Tryon. Um, now, I, again, just an example. Here, okay, we're not not really advocating for anybody in the, the office. Andy, am I? No, yes. Uh, but you know, like I said, it's a veritable who who's a nose knows. Okay, um, uh, um, like I said, I've known Corey since my youngest was in in school in grade school. Uh, I've known Rick Tyron uh, for a very long time. Uh, we're 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 both a product of the the late. Uh, uh, 60s and 70s, I consider Rick a very good friend of mine. Uh, don't get me wrong, uh, we don't agree on everything. There's some stuff that we don't agree on at all. Um, and there's some things that we do agree on, but that's that's how life is, really, people, you know. Uh, you can't have everybody believing 100%, you know. Rick and I do not agree on 100% of the time, but you know what? That that's never, ever gotten in the way of our friendship. It's never clouded our judgment and our love for each other's families. We both re respect each other's beliefs and opinions, even though they may not sometimes always be the same thing. Okay? But that's maturity. And that's what Rick brings to the table, is that maturity. I mean, the relationship is with my friend is it's a mature relationship. We don't agree. Doesn't matter. Hey, what's going on Thanksgiving? Or what's how's the family? That's it. We don't need to harp on it. Don't need to bang the drums. We're great friends. I respect his opinions, and you know, he can be brutally honest at times, almost suit, almost uh, what, what's the word I want to use? You know, almost you know, obscenely honest. I believe that through it all, though, Rick Tryon only wants what's best for our community, his community, the community that he grew uh, uh, that he grew up in. Uh, uh, he, he, he says what he does. Uh, and, and as a politician and as a friend, um, it can be proven by his record. Uh, he doesn't uh, offer and make hollow promises. What you see is what you get. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, um, and I wish him well in the election. If you want someone that good-hearted, I mean, come on, he's married to Phyllis, you know. She's a Detroit Lion fan like me. I mean, come on. Lion fans stick together all through thick and thin because, you know, basically, we've sucked over the years. But that says, you know, a lot. It says a lot. Phyllis, we're going to the Super Bowl. We're going to the Super Bowl. Detroit's going to the Super Bowl. What? I've got off topic. <laughs> You know, what is on topic is is some of the news that when you know, I got to touch on this just before I go and and, and um, you know when I got on the news and kind of come in we always do the, the the news and the national what is it day and there's any breaking stories and, you know everything like that you know um, Monday morning was just this morning it was full. Man, it was just full, and it was sickening. Civilians being killed, hospitals being bombed, 
schools being bombed, schools being targeted, you know, refugees being targeted, women and children and dogs being killed. Where? Pick it. Pick. Eastern Europe. Middle East. You know? I mean, thinking those people, I mean, I always on Facebook again, we're going to have a civil war, you know, we need a civil war. Yeah. Yeah. As much as me and Rick disagree on some things and agree on others, I can't see a civil war making us come to that point. People need to rethink that kind of rethinking, don't they? I mean, come on now. Come on now. <laughs> come on now. So, now we mentioned... I mentioned here, Andy, a year ago, <laughs> we were going to have uh, uh, the former, former Great Falls detective, John Cold Case Cameron, on the show. We're going to have a little expose, talk a few some things, talk about, got a little, little topics ready to go. I ran into John yesterday. Um, he was out there blowing the leaf, blowing the leaves. I you know, pulled up. I'm like, "Hey, John, you know, you know, are you still interested in doing the show?" And you know, we're talking about, you know, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I got some things going on, and you know, a couple months, you know, maybe a little sooner, we'll get you here. And then he goes, you know, "Here's a big jar of my old age sensibilia." Love those retired police officers. I know it. I know it, man. So, again, let's remember. Here's your ballot. Tomorrow, vote. You've got a mayor's race. You've got city commissioners. Um, you've got the safety levy. Uh, mills and bond safety, bond and safety levy, that fire and, and, and fire and police in the city limits. It's needed. You know it's needed. Um, you know it's needed. I'm not going to harp on it, but that's... Crime rate's up. If you want to do something about it, here's a, here's a chance to do something about it. Let's put it that way. Okay? Let's put it that way. All right. Andy's telling me we got to go. We got... We're rolling here. All right. So... Um, we covered it. Tomorrow, get out and vote. We'll be back next Monday. It's Nacho's Day. Do not lost, get stranded without, you know, adrift without your compass. So, no. No. So, until next week, remember everybody, please get out there, spay and neuter those pets, adopt, don't shop, foster, rescue, volunteer, Hey, Andy, hey, everybody, adopt a shelter pet today, okay? Today. Till next week, everybody. Andy, next week, we're here next week. Have a great nacho day. Get out there and vote tomorrow. Everybody, see you next week. <laughs>